We're going to dive right into it tonight. So um, we're going to dive into to Matthew tonight, and we're going we're gonna to go over one of the message points that we have here at the Father's House Church. I really felt the Lord was saying, like, bring it back to that kind of thing. So um, we're going to go over one of those message points. So in Matthew 17, if we could put that up on the screen. Yes. Okay. So six days later, Jesus took him, Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. All right. And behold, Moses, yeah, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with them. Crazy, right? Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Right? So we're going to go over that last bit of the listen to him, right? And we often glaze over this and think, okay, I'll listen to him sometimes, I guess. I'll listen to him when I'm having a hard day, right? Or I'll listen to him when I need something, right? But the thing is, that's not what he's saying. He's saying listen to him, period, all the time. Like, you think that he, he wouldn't need to say all the time, but it should have been said all the time, right? And think about this. This is the first time God has revealed himself and introduced his son to, to a bunch of people, right? And the first thing he says after introducing his son is what? Listen to him. So it must be important, right? He could have said absolutely anything else. This is my amazing son, you know? Follow him, eat with him. Like, do what he's saying, do what he says. But he's saying, listen to him. And honestly, this is the answer for so many things and so many problems that we have if we just listened to him, right? And I was pondering this and praying about this, and the Lord sort of dissected this with me on um, my concept of listening to him was, was skewed, right? And I want to propose a question today of what is the difference between hearing him and listening to him? Because there is an actually a very, very big difference. And we sort of think they're interchangeable, but it's not, right? So here it is. Hearing him, just so you're aware, is the process, function, or power of perceiving sound. That's it. It's just noise going into your ears. Listening, however is paying attention to a message in order to hear it, understand it, and physically or verbally then respond to it, right? Very different things. So if you go back to then what he's saying, God says, listen to him. He's saying, hear my son, understand what he's saying, and then you need to respond to what he's saying, right? And we don't do this often enough. We hear what he's saying, but we don't actually listen to what he's saying, right? So we're going to go through the process of what actually listening looks like, the problems we have, the, some of the solutions that I have found have been, been beneficial, and then we're going to do a little bit of self-reflection and, and how are we really doing with all this, okay? So the first part, again, of listening is hearing, okay? So it's just the noise going into your ears. That's it, right? And as a mother of a two-year-old, I know they don't always hear the, the things that are, they're trying to say to them, right? Have you ever been in the two- to three-year-old age group over in kids' church, and you stick on a show, and then you try to tell them something? Oh my God, yeah. Like, literally, this is them, yeah. right? They zone out, and, like, can't hear what you're saying because they're so distracted by something else, right? Kids do this all the time. And then you have to, like, try to snap them out of it. Hey, like, get in front, turn off the TV, take off the distraction so that they actually hear what you're saying. And this happens to us all the time. Like, daily, we have distractions coming in to try to, 
interrupt us from actually hearing the first process of hearing the noise trying to come in, right? And I hate to say it, but like this happened to me last night. Like last night, I was, I came here, I practiced, went home, freaked out, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I, I can't go. You know, I'm going to call Steve and just tell him that I'm not going to do this. And um, I heard, I had the Lord tap me on my shoulder going, I'm sorry, what are you speaking on? And I was like, um, listening to you? And he said, you're so distracted by your comparison with other people or your fear that's going to happen. Like all these other small distractions that try to come in, you can't actually hear with what I'm trying to tell you. Right? And it, like this happened, like again, this happened to me last night. So imagine how much it happens to all of us. Like we get distracted by money. We get distracted by the, the busyness of the week or what we have going on later today. All these distractions are trying to come in that we just actually just don't hear him, right? And what do we need to do? We just need to kick out the distractions. What I need to do is I need to calm myself down, then put my eyes on him, and then say, okay, I just want to hear from you. I want to listen to you. And then I heard him, right? I got the first part done, right? Another problem we have when it comes to the actual, the hearing process is, um, have you noticed that as humans, we talk a lot, like a lot, like all the time. As verbal processor, myself included, I talk a lot, right? And often I think the Lord is trying to smack us and being like, can you just like stop talking for a second? Like I want to talk, right? <laughs> We think that we need to go to him and tell him all our problems. Hey, did you know that this person's having a really hard time and I got super frustrated with this person? And by the way, I'm having some money problems and I'm having anxiety and there's this and this. And the thing is, he already knows, right? But he wants us to have a time where you're quiet and then you, have a t then you can listen to him, right? So ultimately, we just need to shut our mouths, right? So the second part, let's go to it. We've done the hearing. The second part I'd say is, is the challenging part of listening is the understanding, right? And this is where a lot of people quit is because they don't actually understand what he's saying. You read the parables and you're just like, I don't get it. Glaze over it next, right? I don't understand what he's saying, and it super frustrates me, and then I feel shameful, and then I feel dumb because I don't actually understand what he's saying, right? Because everybody else obviously gets it, and I'm the one that's not getting it, right? Good. And here we were sat, and I'm sure you sat here before when Steve is preaching, and sometimes you're just like, I don't get it. I don't understand, right? But this is a great opportunity for you to press in, like Lisa said, right? You can either quit and tune him out, or what I found beneficial is then ask him questions back. Hey, I don't understand why you're saying this. Can you explain it to me better so that I understand it? Hey, I, I really don't understand why you're putting me in this spot or why you want me to tie this much. Can you tell me, right? It's an opportunity to press in and either ask him more questions or quit and just decide you're not gonna listen to him at all. Right? And I, 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 came, <laughs> I, I came to Christianity um, in Toronto with um, the Catch the Fire movement going on. And, and I hate to say it, um, I, I sat in church a lot. Every Sunday, every Wednesday. I sometimes went on Fridays. And then I'd go to the double services on the Sundays right? I sat and I, and, I, and I thought I was listening and I realized all I was doing is actually was just hearing what they were saying and, and that was it. I understood some of it, not all of it, but I wasn't actually listening to the words of Jesus. I wasn't actually listening to people who had a relationship with him, right? And the thing that flipped it for me was when I came on a, a P61 here 
eons ago, way, way back when, Jonathan Glenn, right? He's a very different man back then. Can I just tell you that? Thank you, Jesus. You have changed him, right? Well, and myself included. But it's true, right? But that goes for everybody. So, you know. But so I came on a P61 from my Toronto team, and I remember exactly where I was sitting. I was three rows back, about um, third seat in. And I remember um, it was a Wednesday night service, and I had an experience with God. I was quiet. I was, I was hearing the, the, the music being played over me. And I heard the Lord say, like, are you tired? And I was like, mm, well, sort of, but not really, right? And that was an opportunity for me to be like, okay, I don't really understand what he's saying. So I might as well ask him, right? So then I asked him, like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, like, aren't you tired of running your own life? wouldn't you rather, like, let me run your life for a while, right? And I was like, that sounds absolutely fabulous, yes. So um, that's when it flipped for me, and um, I mistakenly told Vicky about that. <laughs> right? Like yeah. Mm. And if you've ever met Vicky, um, I, this was in an August time, so then she... Um, said, hey, you have to come to school. Oh my gosh, right? Like, come back. And I was like, I, it's literally in two weeks. I, I can't, like, I got to go home, got to figure it out. Like, I'm in Canada, I got to figure out everything. And, um, but um, I came back. I didn't come back that September. I came back in, uh, in March, the March semester. And I remember, like, um, my sister telling me, hey, like, Vicky came up to me and said, hey, I don't think she's coming, right? And my sister said to her, no, like, if she says she's going to come, then she's going to come, right? And it was all because I listened to what he was saying. I heard what he said. I then understood what he said because I asked the questions. And then I responded, right? And that's when everything flipped for me. It's a three-part thing, listening to him, right? It's not just I hear the stuff on Sundays and I hear the stuff on Wednesdays and then I'll come back the next Sunday and the next Wednesday and then, I, you know, I'm a Christian, right? No, when the Lord God said, this is my son, listen to him, he said it as a command. Like this was not an option thing to do. So we need to then do it, right? And we need to respond in a way where we hear him, we understand him, and then we have to verbally or then physically respond to him, right? Yeah. And, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to take a drink of water. And we, and we, like, it can be a big thing like the, the move across the country thing, Right? But it, it goes with all the small things that happen in your life, too. Like when Jesus says, hey, can you go pray for this person? Hey, could you, could you trust me and, um, and tithe a little more? Hey, um, I want you to go have a conversation with your leader because um, you need to open up and be vulnerable with them. Right? It's, it's even in the small things that he's trying to tell us over and over and over again and continuously. And we often um, are either, again, like distracted by things going on or we just choose to ignore him, right? And like, honestly, how do you think that makes him feel? If on a Sunday the Lord gives an altar call and, he's, and the no Lord is nudging you saying, hey, I need you to go up. Hey, I need you to go up. And you're like, eh, I don't really want to. I have to go get my kids and I got the rest of the day going on. Like, honestly, how do you think that makes him feel? Really that, that hurts his heart that you are choosing not to listen to him and then not respond to what he's asking you to do. Because the truth is, he, he's a father who knows what's best for us even when I don't understand it or when I don't, I, I don't think it's the right call, right? 
when you discipline your kids or when you're trying to tell them instructions, like they use this example all the time. Like, don't let your kid, like, don't let, you have to tell your kids not to run across the street, right? Why? Because you don't want them to get hit by a car, right? And if they don't listen to you, then what's going to happen? They're going to run out and get hit by a car or whatever else, right? But the truth is, as a parent, he's trying to tell us things and he's trying to continuously talk to us and we need to listen to him. We need to listen to him, right? We're going to go over, we're going to do the self-reflection part. Is everybody ready for that? Oh, maybe not. Okay, so we're going to go over, we're going to go through a couple verses that Jesus said, and we're going to see how we're doing with that. Because he said it, so we might as well listen to it and see how we're doing with it, okay? The first one is John 15. If you could put that up. John 15. It's not the one. It's a good thing I wrote down up here. Okay, it's John 15, 12 to 13, but that's okay. We'll go, uh, hopefully you have the next one. Anyway, so the Lord said, Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that you lay down your life. Okay, so Jesus is saying this. How are we doing on this? I've now heard him say it. I've heard it. Do you understand it? Oh, sorry, I want a response. Do you understand it? Yes. Yes, I understand it. Okay, lay down my life, love other people as he's given the example for. Okay, now are you responding in that way? Doing okay. Sometimes. Right? Nope. Okay. Okay, let's go to another one. What else does he say? Let's do Matthew 18. No? But we need to listen to him, Vicki. Okay? Matthew 18, 6 to 7. Okay. If anyone causes any one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. So nice and airy and cheery, right? Yeah. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Okay. So he said this. How are we doing with listening with this? Let's skip to the next one. That's not so good. Yeah. Okay. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Another really good one. <sighs> then Peter came to the Lord and asked him, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Like, that sounds good. Yeah. And Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Okay, so Jesus has said that. I've heard it. I understand it. Am I actually doing it? Steve's saying, going like this. Yes and no, right? Like 77 times. 70 times 7, sorry, yes, which is a lot more. I wish it was just 77, but not. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot. And, and the truth is, I can honestly say that I need to work on that one. Right? Lord. It's a good thing I got more verses. Okay, let's go to Luke 9. Okay. Turn the page. Yes, next. Luke 9, 24, for whoever wishes to save his life and lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. So this is lay down your life for other people. Like your full life for other people. Not just 50%, right? Oh, but I do a ministry school. That's good enough, right? That's my full life. No. Your full life all the time. Every single moment of the day, Right? We'll, we'll do one more, okay? Just one more. It's fine. You're welcome. Luke 6, 35. Okay? No, the best for last. No. But love your enemies and do good, right? Those are, like, do both. Love your enemies. 
and do good and lend, expecting absolutely nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and evil men. Right? Okay. I am now listening to you, Jesus. I hear what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And I need to respond to that. Right? So don't say, so here's the thing. Don't say you're listening to Jesus if you're not doing all three. Because you're not listening to Jesus. If you're not hearing him and you're not understanding him and you're not responding to him, then you're not listening to him. Right? (laughs) Sorry to smack you. Right? So... I I was going to read some Ephesians for you guys and tell you, like, what would happen if you actually don't listen to Jesus. But, um, sure. Sure, let's do that, you know? Let's, like, because here's the reality. If, If you don't know what the consequence is, then, then there's a problem. You, you, then you sort of feel like, oh, it's not a big deal if I actually don't do it, right? So here's, here's a part of the consequence, Ephesians 4, 17 to 19. And this is Paul writing to Christians if you don't do what Jesus is asking you to do, okay? So I tell you this. No problem, I'll read it. So I tell... Oh, sh- so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you may, longer, you may no longer live as Gentiles do in the futile futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of grief. Like, doesn't that sound absolutely horrible? I don't want to be separated from the life of God. Like, that in itself sounds terrible, right? But then add in the darkness of your understanding. So you're not going to understand things, and then your heart's going to be hardened also, right? Like, that's absolutely horrible, which is why it's so important when the Lord said, listen to my son, we do it, right? This is not hearing what he's saying. This is actually listening to what he's saying. You need to respond to what Jesus is saying right? And he's constantly trying to talk to us over and over and over. Like in worship, he was trying to talk to you. When you're at your job, he's trying to talk to you, right? And I just pray that your ears be opened so you can listen to him, right? We're going to have an opportunity tonight where we're going to be able to listen to him. Right, and we're gonna purposely not have any worship music that is where there's lyrics or anything. Take off one distraction that can actually take us out of it, right? But we're gonna have a moment where I just want you to quiet yourselves and listen. Right? Again, listening is I'm hearing him, I'm understanding him, and then I'm gonna respond. And let me encourage you, if you're not understanding, that's okay. If you're at the beginning of your Christianity and you don't hear, don't be frustrated by that. You're in a group where there's lots of people who can help you along the way. Who can help get rid of the distractions. Right? So Jesus, I just pray for this group. that they have ears to listen what you're saying, open hearts and the courage to respond. And we just kick out any distractions that are trying to come in and make them think about, oh, I gotta get my kids, I have things going on, I can't wait for some sleep.
Jesus, you're, you're trying to talk to us and have a relationship with us and draw us in for more of you. Please respond to what he's saying. We're going to have some ministry team up here. If you're needing some help with this, please don't be discouraged because the Lord is just nudging you to draw closer to him. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe so that you never miss another video or live stream. And if you'd like to support the Father's House, just click the Give button. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you soon.